Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of To Be Released. I'm Wokey and I'm here with Zenrut. Hello. And it's just us once again. Back here once again to tip the scales. I our consistency. Yeah, I'm, I'm also shocked by consistency. You know, it's so shocking that we're so consistent that I'm now getting comments from people going, Whoa, you upload now? <laughs> You've always uploaded though. Yeah, but I usually take like uh, long ass breaks. I usually do. I do like one weird video, and then for some reason I disappear for like three weeks, and then I come <laughs> back. All right, that's fair. Yeah, it's fair. This time, we're back, even though it's fucking crazy hell with my work and everything. Does not matter. This the train keeps going. <laughs> Dokkan train keeps running. You can't stop the Dokkan train, nor can you stop the big boy train. And we have some also new true. big new big boys coming into the station. <laughs> <laughs> and first the new big boy is actually the surprise return of the big boy. We have uh STR EZA Gogeta. And then our other big boy, which is a surprise to me. No one expected this character to get uh, any form of a buff. It is Chi Chi. SDR Chi Chi. The SSR got it. <laughs> they got a toke on. It was originally going to be Agility Kid Boo, and then I saw that she got uh, <laughs> she got awakened, and I realized I don't want to talk about Kid Boo anymore. That's fair. There you go. Maybe next time, Agility Kid Boo, when the int one gets. Uh, uh, an easy a and then we'll just do a quick kid boo through the ages big boyness history of kid boo as a big boy yeah the history of big boy the big boyness of kid boo which has been in flux for many times ever since the original release of the fi of the physical one of the physical kid boo and it's always been a weird scale anyway that's too much time on kid boo let's first talk about our first big boy gogeta you all again another fucking Gogeta. Another fucking Gogeta. I believe that's how you could describe Dokkan's meta. Another fucking Gogeta. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong. No, I'm not. So we have STR Gogeta. For those of you who don't remember the first year of Dokkan, he was like six months in, right? Six months in, he was our first. Uh, no, Gogeta know. was the year. Was he, he was the, the first one year anniversary? So does that mean um, Super Vegito was the six months, or was he two year? Super Vegito was a year and a half. Year and a half? Okay, that's what I thought. Because he, again, when Go when this Gogeta came out, he literally free roamed the game for like an entire six months. That was yeah, his for run. half a year, he was the game. For an entire year, you either had this unit or you had shit units that you tried to put into a team. You had, you had characters that were potentially Gogeta leaders that you could use with other Gogetas. If you were building an all blue team, you use Gogeta as the leader, and then you had another blue <laughs> leader, maybe, or maybe you just went uh, double you Gogeta. Much had the other Gogeta as the. <laughs> yeah, it was so. Ever since then, I feel like they he was so powerful. They specifically were scared of ever doing rainbow stuff again, and so he kind of lay dormant for many years, even though he has still been silently okay. Like, once Int Gogeta came out, it was clear, like, okay, his time has passed. And now enough time has passed that he's got an Extrema Z Awakening, and now he is way more powerful than the Int one. Yeah. Yeah, he is. He sure is. I think, they, I, think, I think the original calculations was, before we knew anything about his Easy Gate, is that he needed, what, what was it, a 30% to his uh, passive to outperform? What was it? I thought it was 60%. 60%? 60% sounds more uh, accurate. 30% sounds like what I've heard through the grapevine as it's gone down in size and scope. <laughs> as people have continued to hype it up more and more. As his legend grows. Yeah, so he needed about 60%. So let's see what he got. First of all, his leader skill, all attributes, 3 attack, HP, defense, 77, 77% up. His passive is his own attack and defense 77% up. And then if for every rainbow ball you get, it's another 7% attack. And then every single 
he is super positive, super effective against every single type. Yep. And his name is still, let's see, what is his name? His original name. It is... It's Super Gogeta. Absolutely Invincible Warrior. That, I mean, his title. Oh, oh his title. Yeah. It is good that he's Super Vegeta, though, because you can run him with Super Saiyan Vege- Gogeta from the movie. Yes, it's considered two different entities since he's never... In the movie of Janemba, was a Fusion Reborn? Is that the... Yeah. Okay, just to get it right. Um, He never went base form. He only had, they only had his fat form and his skinny form, and that was it. And then he just yeah, was. He had he had Viku, and he had Super Super Gogeta. There you go. So yeah, you can use him with the regular Vegetas, the Vegetas, v- Gogetas. So he already works pretty good with the other five out of five big boys. His leader skill is good enough that if you wanted it's to fine. use, it's fun for like fluff teams. Yeah, and if for whatever reason you don't have, you want to run heroes, and you have no better heroes lead, Gogeta will do perfectly fine. Like, he's not the best uh, leader just because 77% isn't, you know, you could have a bigger number. About 100% behind where the really good leaders are now, but... Yeah. But it's decent enough that if you wanted to mess around with him, it's possible. And his super attack remained unchanged. It's just the very simple throw. (laughs) Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. I think this is a pretty good ex- uh, Extreme Z Awakening, though. Considering, yeah, the f- I mean, it's probably the best one. I mean, except for maybe like, maybe in terms of like how good he was before to now, it's not the best one. But the end result is the best one. Yes, I think the the another person who did the exact same thing, which was Injinemba, did the similar thing where he was released, his EZA was released, and it completely made the STR one irrelevant. Yeah. Where it's like, well, if you have Infinite Emba, there's now literally no reason. And a lot of that also comes down to the fact that they're, um, God, what the fuck is that thing called? So many games use it now that I can't remember the name of it. His path, that thingy. Oh, like the orb system thing? There you go, orb system. I wanted to call it a mana circle because that's what it's called in Dragalia Lost, but... (laughs) I mean, it's close enough to a mana circle. Yeah, you know what I mean, that, the orbs. So you put orbs in him, and he gets the 7,000 to attack in the fence, was it? He has one of the old ones, where because he was an older yeah, unit, he gets an, he's an old one, so he gets a bigger wheel. Yeah, so his stats are pretty crazy. The only thing that's, like, weak is his defense, which he's going to be killing everything. So does it super matter? Yeah, that doesn't matter. <laughs> that sure doesn't matter. We are both of the same mind that, like, as long as you have enough defense, it's fine. Because you should be able to kill them in very little time. Uh, but yeah, just super, super solid. Now, here's the, th- here's the question. I've now officially used the 5 out of 5 Gogeta, and I'm not 100% sure if this Gogeta ranks super high with the other Gogeta. He's not as good as the other one, no, no, definitely not. And he's not as good as Krillin. Let's just say that for the well, fact. He is obviously. Not as good as Krillin. The first 15 out of 5 big boy. Um, but I think he definitely deserves like a 4 out of 5 with like, if the old, like for a unit this old to be this good, it's still kind of surprising. The thing that holds him back is that it's still the same old super attack every single time. And I do get a yeah, little... Yeah, plus the art doesn't change, and the art's kind of old. I mean, yeah. good old, yeah. but he's a nos- not great. He's nostalgic to look at, for sure. Like, it reminds yeah, me... Yeah, yeah, that's a good way to put it. Yeah, he reminds me of, like, the old days of Dokkan. Right. Yeah. Um. So there is a tiny issue with his new passive. Oh, with is the it? rainbow balls. It's very minuscule. But the LR also needs rainbow balls. Oh. And that's pretty much the only way to get him to like 24 key or whatever. Yeah. Is to, to feed him rainbow orbs. So, I mean, it's not like a big deal. But uh, if there is a flaw to pick out of that passive, it would be that. Okay, that's a tiny flaw. Yeah, I could see that. It's. It's one of those things of, like, if you're running that team, chances are you would never give it to him, but also at that point, why does he have it? If it's going to be right yeah, counter. It, it's not a flaw that really, like, 
detracts, <laughs> you know, it's just a flaw in the sense that he has to have at least one somewhere on here. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. So yeah, I feel I feel four out of five big boy is good enough for this Gogeta. Yeah, I, I'm content giving him a four out of five big boy as well. I think that he's fine with that. Yeah. For a former, I would say if we went six months back when back when we uh, started all this, if we went if we went back in time from actually I wasn't even a mod back then and when Dokkan was out when Gogeta months. came out. Yeah. I, I like how so. you said if we went back six months. That was three years ago. That was three we're about to hit the four years of fucking Dokkan. We're about dude. to hit the big four, my friend. We're about to hit the big four, and we're about to be disappointed because there's more GT stuff, and it's like, who cares about yeah, that? Yeah, it's going to be more Super Saiyan 4s that nobody wants. I already did not want to open Dokkan when I saw that fuck's face on my... <laughs> on my yeah, on my... the new on the Apple logo. I'm really hoping that it's just like, this is the app design we're going with because it's the four-year anniversary, and it's not a Super Saiyan 4, because that's really going to suck when it's another goddamn stupid-looking Super Saiyan 4. This is this is the one time where I'm with Sahal where I really hope that he's right, and that it's the same. It's the Namekian situation where everything was themed like Namek, and then we didn't get anything Namek related. <laughs> <laughs> the only problem is that uh, Zahal said it, so now it's not. Gonna yeah, that's the thing. It's so sad too because he was so like, listen, last time I got fucked, so obviously they're gonna do it this way. And then I feel Dokkan is now 100% going like, well, it's obvious that Zahal wants it this way, so we're not gonna go that way. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're watching his and they're waiting until he finally gets confident enough that he gets like a little haughty about it, yes. like just enough to where it would be embarrassing if he was wrong. And then they're like, fucking switch that shit around, do it. We all know that they're waiting. <laughs> they have, <laughs> they have, they follow three accounts. It's mine, yours, and Zahal's, and they only follow it to make them look stupid. Yep. So let's hope. Let's see what happens in the four years. I'll just say right now that uh, any GT unit that is on the big boy scale automatically has a minus one in any of yeah, the scaling. Yeah, GT cannot be five out of five on the big boy scale. It's not uh, possible. No. It has to be an extreme case where somehow we let someone in here who's a super GT fan and they did what D-Free did. And give him like a broken ass score. Yes. It would have to be that kind of situation in order for them to achieve true five out of five. Actually, no, that's not true. Um, B Pan could be a five out of five. Oh, that's true. B Pan could be. Again, we'll work it out. We'll we'll start. You know, <laughs> con the big boy scale is a constant ebbing and flowing, uh, changing yeah, it's thing. Yeah, it's a it's a work in progress. It's not all at once. Exactly. We are constantly flowing with the times, just like our constitution. I think is supposed to be like, <laughs> but isn't. Yes. <laughs> 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 and speaking of the constitution, Chi Chi. <laughs> is goku's wife and she got she wants to put up the wall she, she what Gigi would not want to put up the wall she had a firewall she lived there a wall of fire for most of her life that didn't let her go into her home if anything <laughs> and then she took the 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 what's it fucking called the ran fan no the the the, the basho the, fan banjo banjo fan she took the fan and she blew it, that shit away it was the banjo fan well, actually, what happened is that Goku blew up her house, but then later on, <laughs> later no, on, didn't Roshi blow up her house? Oh, it wasn't Goku. It was okay. You know what? You're right. It's been such a long. I might have to actually legit reread Dragon Ball now if I'm dropping like such. Yeah, I think I think Roshi blew up her house, and that's how Goku learned how to do the Kamehameha. You're correct. That is correct. Oh, I'm gonna beat myself up all day for forgetting that. It's such a. <laughs> minuscule detail that i'm now just going to be kicking myself all day but anyway chi chi in her adult form for those of you who don't know chi chi beat up goku and then they got married because that's how love is and then they had a weird arc that only happened in the anime where the fire came back to her house and the ox king was trapped inside and they had to go get a fan uh and they basically made a unit based off of that one anime filler <laughs> <laughs> And that is why they we... had to go get the fan that they were originally going to get in with Master Roshi. Where Roshi was like, oh, fuck it. You don't need that. I'll just shoot it with a Kamehameha and it'll be fine. And he was right. 
unfortunately the flames eventually came back they decided to make her a unit and then also she's in the category of the waifu units that always come out with the hearts out if anyone plays enough of the game they know what kind of units we're talking about it's the same as videl android 18 unfortunately That's the, Pan. Uh, the blowjob girls category right yes it's the blowjob girls category that <laughs> google translate calls them that not us <laughs> this is yeah, not that's us what google that's it's it's like peachy peachy girls which i think that's the sound that's supposed to make when like a heart's beating right i thought that was doki doki i think peachy peachy oh, it is. is uh peachy peachy is like the kind of girl roshi likes that's what i think i i understand because there's like that's what his magazines are called or something it it means young vigorous and energetic there you go. And Pan's not allowed in that category for various reasons. Various but, legal reasons. <laughs> for various legal reasons, she's not on there. But this Chi-Chi is on there. Let's get into her actual unit, because we're just going to go in circles not talking about her. <laughs> her leader skill is power and body attributes, three key, HP, attack, and defense, 70% up. And her passive skill is called Pure Dream. At, at the start of the turn, she gets 100% uh, attack up. And then if there's a Peachy Gal category in there, they get three key, and then they get defense 120% up. I believe that is correct. That's yeah. pretty good. Why do they give leader skills to, to cards that don't have good ones? What's even the point of taking the time to do that? I don't know. Just give it none. Like, 90% of the cards in this game might as well just have none. So why even keep doing it? I think it's supposed to be that if you ever got so unlucky that you needed to run one of these, it's like, okay, well, I guess you can run her now. But then you're not going to find any other Chi-Chi yeah, unit. you're not going to find the friend. Nobody's running Chi-Chi friend lead. No. I, trust me. I tried. Look, no one's running a Chi-Chi friend. And then also, she doesn't work with extreme STR either. So she's not going to be working with that team. <laughs> But yeah, I don't know why some people just have leader skills and they're just kind of like, it's funny because their leader skills are way better than they were when the game started, but yet, and still compared to the meta of today, it's still not that good. Yeah, it's terrible. Yeah. It's bad. And then also her links are Courage, Innocent, Infighter, Woman Warrior, Mysterious Adventure, Dragon Ball, Guidance of the Dragon Balls, and Rebirth. That could be worse. Yeah, and her super attack is literally using the bon the bon the bon show fan. She hits it with the enemy yeah. with it. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure all that does is make wind. Yeah, she hits them with fucking tiny tornadoes. <laughs> so yeah, Chi Chi, this is an interesting one in the sense of like this is a team. She supports a team that is literally a joke team, because Dokkan has decided that the world tournament units and <laughs> women units are on the same level of joke team <laughs> that's true that's true shout outs to dragon ball legends for making girl units actually good yes and i feel like they've been trying to slowly make them good but also like in the most backhanded way possible <laughs> like their leader skill their leader is like an unawakened ssr <laughs> <laughs> doesn't even have like a turret in it at all it's so weird I don't understand why they do this. <laughs> and it makes me yeah, so... Yeah, it's like, this unit's supposed to be fun, funny collectible, but like it could also be good. Right? Yeah, they could also be good. I think that's the part where Dokkan doesn't understand is that the women can also be good. Like, we already have units like Frost fighting with like people that should kill him with a blink of an eye. So what does it matter if Chi-Chi is fighting Jiren? Let Chi-Chi beat Jiren. Yeah, that's the whole point of the fun of these kind of games. Is to have Chi- Like, in Legends, Mai pulls out two Glocks and just starts shooting, dude. Straight it's up awesome. dumping. And it's amazing. And meanwhile, Dokkan, you have- They made a unit that is literally all the women in one unit, and then it's not an actual unit. It's yeah, just- Yeah, you can't even use it. It's like a trophy in your box. And meanwhile, last year, the fucking Cybermen was made playable. <laughs> That's true. They were. Maybe the most disrespect ever given to anything, to all the women of Dragon Ball, to all the waifu of Dragon Ball, was the fact that the fucking Cybermen got playable. <laughs> <laughs> that is disappointing. It is. So it feels like this category of just like the peachy peachy gals have just been like 
really weird. Like, I knew when it started, it got weird because the way they worded it, it's very much like, so Pan's not allowed to be on it, and then neither is Aureli, when at the time, physical Pan and physical Aureli were both the strongest women in the game. So, all, <laughs> yeah, already you're taking away two of the strongest, and then now we're here in modern times, and it's not any better. There's no, I don't think there's, there still is no Dokkan Festival, like, woman unit in the entire game. The closest you get is, um... Kefla, and even then she's a rebirth. Yeah, I think the two best girl units are Kefla and then the Mai that's on LR Trunks. Yes. With some people thinking that Bulla, which we're not talking about, even though she is good, she gives two key and then 40% attack just straight up. And if GT is literally coming in the four years, she might be extremely useful. But again, that's... <laughs> She's a unit that's good, but not for the category she was built for. She's good for <laughs> GT. That's the classic, really, with Dokkan. It is. So, man, I don't know what to rate this. I don't know how big of a boy this Chi-Chi is. Also, her, her title is Oaf Happy. It's Just, what? Is Oaf, like, you know, like the Oaf Keeper, happy. Oh, oh, okay. Yes. I want to rate her high just because she's smiling at me and I feel really happy because I love this design of Chi-Chi, this, the end of Dragon Ball style Chi-Chi before she got pregnant and then she turned into kind of a a very demanding uh, what, uh mother. Bit of a shrew of a woman. A little bit of a shrew. She kind of has to be if she wants to raise her kid, right? Because Goku's not going to do it. Not in the way she wants, I should say specifically. Goku would raise the kid the way he wants, which is to be very powerful. <laughs> <laughs> so Chi Chi had to change in order to realize like okay if I'm gonna let this kid succeed and have this weird dream of being a scholar that I'm gonna have to start putting in work now and at the end of the day she did win so she had to change everything about her but this early design I just love so much the Chinese the, the Chinese dress the happy go lucky smile the long <sighs> You say something about Chi Chi because now I'm just getting distracted about this age of Chi Chi. Uh, five out of five, easy, easy, easy. Five out of five, easy. Not even no, no debate. Fuck it, you're right. Five out of five for Chi Chi as yeah, well. Five out of five, Chi Chi. Not even a question. She gives 120 percent defense. That's a lot of D. That is just <laughs> unbelievable amount. That's a lot of defense, and man, that dress is good. Yes. And everything about it. She's also one of the few lady cards that actually goes well with the hearts. Because usually the hearts are just everywhere. It actually looks like she's like shooting them out of her. Like she's throwing her hands in the air and just going like, here's the hearts. Take them all. <laughs> throwing them out like Valentine's candy. Exactly. So with that, Chi Chi kind of happily joins Gogeta and Krillin as a 5 out of 5 <laughs> big boy. Gogeta Blue, Krillin in Piccolo's outfit, and... uh Chi-Chi. Chi-Chi. But very specific Chi-Chi. Uh, unless they ever decide to make Ka Kaioken Chi-Chi another unit, in which case we will gladly do another big... We'll put her on the scale and see how she stacks oh, up. Oh, yeah. I, uh, yeah, not... Uh, definitely. 100%. But yeah, those are our big boy scales. Thank you to Chi-Chi and Gogeta. <laughs> Remember, so just to give a quick <laughs> summary, original Gogeta STR, 4 out of 5 big boy, current waifu Chi-Chi, 5 out of 5. And they join the scale. Right. All right. She is, of course, the one that you should go for if you have to pick between the two. Oh, 100%. Like, that's not even a question. I have a rainbow Gogeta, and I would trade it all for a rainbow Chi Chi. <laughs> Factual. 100%. 100%. All right, then. Now it's time for the next segment, because after we're done talking about the big boys, we answer some of your questions that you sent us. Again, if you want to send us a question, because I did not mention how we could, you could send us one previously, I believe, because I was distracted by D free. Um, you can either send it to me on Twitter when I ask for them. There will be a very specific thread, or you can try leaving it in the comment, and I'll maybe it'll get answered there. Who knows? Eh. We'll see. So, first question, and I feel like I always like to. The first person to ever send one, whoever's quick enough on the draw to send a question, their question will always be answered. So here's a question from Neptune, which is a follow-up to the to the last question, which is when is Zenrat playing Fago, Fate Go? 
The current question is, all right, when is Zenrot playing Grand Blue after I told him that you had already answered the previous question? <laughs> uh, no. The answer is no. Just straight up no. Big no. Hmm. Fair. Because Grand Blue is also by the people who did Dragalia, so... Correct. That would just mean Drag that's just Dragalia's eventual future, so that means it also plays... Oh, apparently, the grind is also way worse on... Uh, yeah, that's what I hear. Grand Blue, which is a bummer. I hear that a it's lot. Already really bad in in yeah. Dragalia. Yeah, you know, there's waifus can only get you so far. At a certain point, the grind just becomes too much. Yeah, it just beats you down. Yeah, as I was telling someone uh, recently, like as someone is saying, like uh, Dragalia is the short version of what Grand Blue does, and I was talking to Aminal about this because I uh, I said like the end game grind in dragalia is terrible and he said your shonen or is showing and i said i would rather do shonen or is end game grind because what you have to do in dragalia is ridiculous i have to feed i have to go farm five worm prints and then a bunch of metals 200 no is it 200 silver metals and then 100 gold medals in order to buy another worm print that will eventually get me started on the actual end game boss, which is part one of five. That's one thing I have to do. <laughs> God, that's awful. It is. But uh, thank you for the question, Neptune. I look forward to the next gotcha. You ask, what is that? What is that? We're going to play. <laughs> uh, next question comes from Dumbledaz from at Dumbledaz, and he asks, what anime would you want to see to get a gacha game, and how would you want it to play out? Hmm. Let me see. An actual anime. I think uh, I'll answer this just so you can have some time to think about it, because now you have to think about an anime for a bit. My, my answer is uh, The Haunted uh, Hot Springs Yuna. Which, if you remember Shonen Or Collection, rest in peace. I do remember who you're talking about. Yeah, she is the ghost girl with boobs whose uh, special in Or Collection was you squished against them and then she yelled at you. Uh, that is tame compared to what actually happens into the in the manga of Yuna and the Haunted Hot Springs, which I have caught up to and am currently uh, waiting for the next chapter every given week. <laughs> I would love to have a gacha based around those characters because I think there's enough actual fighting. And then it would literally be the part of gachas that every gacha has, which is just every all of every character would be a waifu. And then every other character would be a dude. But there would be like three dude characters and then the rest would be all women. <laughs> <laughs> and the characters are well thought out and they have some interesting battle fights. Like I would love it if the Tanuki girl special was something like... Uh, summoning like one of her abilities in the manga was that she literally summoned a giant kaiju sized version of one of the girls but only in a bikini like not even a bikini it was technically her underwear i would love that to be a special attack in this gacha game <laughs> that that i <laughs> in theory would like to make <laughs> as for what it would play like um that's the part where i kind of don't know Something not too grindy. Let's just leave it at that. Something not too grindy and not in 3D, because 3D models are okay, but I prefer it in 2D. Okay. Yeah, that's where I go. What do you What do you feel, Zen? Um, I think I'm gonna go with I want a Kenshin one because there is a Kenshin game, but it sucks. It's t fucking terrible. Hmm. Um, and I want it to be a turn based like Final Fantasy esque RPG. Oh, huh. That would be super interesting for sure. I'm surprised that not a lot of it's, it's actually just Brave Exvius, isn't it? That kind of does the turn. No, Record Keeper does it. Uh, Opera Omnia does it. Oh, I guess mostly uh, Final Fantasy games then. Yeah. But yeah, I could see that. Kenshin would make, I think, a pretty good one, even though. I think this is another case where, like, similar when you asked me, like, you played Final Fantasy VII, and I said no. Kenshin is similar. I only remember Kenshin because it was on on Cartoon Network, but I don't think I ever actually read or watched Kenshin. Jesus. All right. Well, yeah. <laughs> add that to the list. Add that to the list. And it is eventually going to have to be watched just because I'm in the whole watch every single Shonen Jump or read every Shonen Jump manga possible. 
So Kenshin will get. I believe it is on the two dollar uh, thing. It is, but also so is Doctor Slump. So I'm kind of. It's between that or Doctor Slump of what I'm gonna read next. <laughs> uh oh. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. Jojo is not on there, and I'm really pissed off about it. Yeah, I don't know why the fuck Jojo is not on. Actually, there's really a lot of forward to reading all of Jojo, and it was not on there. There's a lot of um. You can buy the manga there, but at the same time, I would want it to be actually like. I well, okay, it. they advertised the goddamn deal as everything that has ever been out in Shonen Jump, and they were like, "JK, it's actually close percent." Yeah, it's it's weird. I don't. I think a lot of it also like Yuna is again a Shonen Jump property, but she's not on that app at all, and it's because some other people have the rights to Yuna. So I want to say if it's yeah, like I a, think I think that's the same with uh, Shaman King. Yeah. So I think there's also a certain extent of just like being afraid of having JoJo because for some reason in the West JoJo took a long time to get over just because of their names, and even though they've changed the names, they still are like super fearful <laughs> of anything with JoJo related, as if like the the uh, the estate of Rodney James Dio is gonna show up one day and ask for its fucking money. <laughs> That's true. So I don't know. We'll see. But yeah, those are those are our answers. I I get you get you said one of your favorite series, and I wanted basically another waifu gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> Both noble causes. Yes. Uh, thank you for the question. Next question comes from Diego SSR, and their ad is SSR Diego. So that makes me think that Diego SSR was taken when they <laughs> created their Twitter <laughs> handle. <laughs> Or yeah, that's or the other way around, mm. but that does make sense. <laughs> Makes sense to me. And they asked the important question of: Are you playing Fe Fire Emblem Heroes? Me or both of us? That's for both of us. Oh, uh, I I have very love hate with that game. Mm hmm. So I like Fire Emblem a lot, and for some reason fire emblem heroes was not able like it's able to occasionally bring me back but then also eventually it just like makes me go away and i'm not 100 percent sure why like uh, I, I think the game is like kind of mediocre but ephraim is really cool so that's my dilemma yeah that would do it right I mean, I think that's the same way for me. Like, I get characters that I like because I'm like, oh, shit, it's Fire Emblem, and I like all these characters. I like all these dudes, and now I get to use these dudes. Uh, but then eventually the gameplay just breaks for me, and I go like, well, it's time for me to return to my other gotchas, even though you could argue whether or not any of those gotchas are on the same level of, like, its gameplay or not. But for whatever reason, its gameplay has never been the thing that's been able to keep me all this time. So, yeah, the question yeah, is, it's right? It's okay. I play it sometimes, and then I'm like, why the fuck am I still playing this? And then I stop, and then they release a new Ephraim, and I'm like, well, getting to be about that, and then I get him. Yeah. I could see that. Thank you for the question, Diego SSR. I hope that answers it. The answer is Zen is like in a constant state of maybe, and then I'm just currently no. Next question, this comes from Michael Smith, and it's it asks the very salient question of, are you going to miss Horde Collection? This is just now the gotcha graveyard where we talk about, <laughs> at least Fee is still alive, <laughs> mine is not. Yeah, Horde <laughs> Collection, man, that's, that's a hard-hitting question for you, isn't it? That's kind of salt in the wound. It is. I already said goodbye. I did my goodbye video for Horde Collection, and now I'm at the point where I'm like, whatever this... Or collection two is. I would like to see it now because I need something. Jonas shown and jump gotcha now. But yeah, yeah, I'm getting kind of sick of waiting. Yeah, I'm also getting sick of waiting. It for some reason the build up to or collection two is the same fucking build up of actual or collection. We're just fucking waiting for news all the time, and it's super <laughs> annoying that somehow even though it's dead, it is still living in some way. But yeah, the answer is always going to be yes. I'm always going to miss OG or collection, even if there's an or collection too. And that's like really good. And it continues on for long periods of time. The game that I liked was one and it had its problems for sure. That's not going to change the fact that I 
put a lot of time and effort into it. I did a bunch of videos on it. And I just like tinkering around in that game. Like I put up with so much of its bullshit just because I liked it. I put up with the fact that it took me like an entire hour to beat the, what the fuck is the name of that Hunter x Hunter guy? Crollo? There you go. Crollo? It, it yeah. took me an hour and 30 minutes to beat Crollo for the first time. So imagine playing that mission, and I didn't change the phone to anything else. I wasn't playing on emulator. So if my phone stood on a fucking screen for an hour and 30 minutes to beat him once. And then once... <laughs> Once I beat him, I went, okay, it's time to get this down. And I eventually whittled it down all the way to like 10 minutes. But that's how much I liked it, is that I was willing to put up with like, that's literally breaking enough for any person to go, I don't understand why I'm playing this game anymore if it's going to take me this long to do anything. But for me, it was always like, no, I want to do this. I need to do this. (laughs) Torturing myself. To prove a point. Exactly. To prove a point that, yes, Yusuke and a tiny horse can beat Krolo, the villain from Hunter x Hunter. Uh, Yusuke would shit on I was saying. I mean, yeah, well, now you've actually read both, so I'm going to just assume that Yusuke, you have being a main character, would easily beat any of the dudes from Hunter x Hunter. It's like not actually. Uh, if we're talking end of series Yusuke, it's a, just a wash. Like, it's not even close. I believe, technically speaking, the Yusuke that um, or Collection had, it was the Dark Tournament era. Yes, but there's still nothing that Krolo does that leads me to believe he could handle Dark Tournament Yusuke. All right, fair enough. You'll leave it at that. Yes. But yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm always going to miss it. That's the way it's going to be. I don't know how you feel, Zen. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to miss it. Or was always very hit or miss for me. Um it started off with a whole lot of like, wow, this shit's going to be fucking awesome. And then it extremely was not like mm. in the biggest way possible. It was not when it started out. Yeah. Uh, but they, I just think they figured out too late that they fucked up. Yeah. It feels like it's a lot harder to win a base back than it is to keep the one you start with. Definitely. And that also answers uh, the start of another question. That's thank you very much for the question uh, from this is from, uh, I believe it's a uh, f- fuck Faisu. Let's say Faisu. Um, what do you think was the biggest reason why or jump or died? Also press F. We've already pressed F. Um, it was that early game. That early game just killed so many people. Like when PVP started and it was, and then Bobo Bo was released. Boba Bo is what killed or collection in the long run. It was like, yes, uh, he, even when PVP got to the point that he no longer like ruled the world, it was... he was still so good that you could lose entire games to him and there's nothing you could do about it. Yes. There was always like, eventually some dudes like Sket dance, they got good but there was a way to counter them because Sket Dance required so many units, but they still used Bobobo, and Bobobo was the reason you lost a lot of games. Like, it was a dude who was like... And the funny thing is, is that when Bobobo started, Bobobo was not that good. Bobobo was nowhere near as broken as he was, but then they buffed him. And I don't understand why they buffed a unit that did not need a buff. But they... I think they thought... Well, this guy, because the game was a little on the stingy side with its freebies and stuff, like its yeah. currency. Uh, I think they thought, well, everyone can get this guy because he's a starter unit that you can pick at the beginning of the game. Yeah. And he was like the only good one, so he was always the one you took. Um, and they were like, this guy can be the PvP equalizer. So if anyone wants to bitch, oh, PvP is broken, well, everyone can have Bobo Bo. But the problem is that Bobo Bo's design was fucking cancer. Yeah. So for people who don't know, this is basically what he did. All in one, he could seal the inti- the front main team's ultimate attack, and if they got past that, then his own ultimate attack could also seal their ultimate attack while also just dealing a good burst of damage. And then he had another skill that lowered the cooldowns of protagonists, but also had a chance to just stun them in place. And he had a passive that said, I start the game with, like, 
75% of my cooldowns already down. So he you had what was it around 10 It had, was it was fast enough that that skill he a got that got, went off like every 5 seconds could only go off one time before Bobo Bo started going. Yes, it was you had that amount of time to deal with Bobo. Bo. So the answer to Bo, to defeat Bobo Bo, was to use your own Bobo, Bo, Bo, but if yep. he was in the back then you were fucked. Yeah, so the the one team that kind of got big toward the the death knoll of uh or was the blue team. And it got really big post Hie because Hie could snipe Bobo. Bo. That was like the big call to like holy shit blue's really good because it shuts down Basically, I mean, it shut down most offensive teams because they were fragile as fuck. Yes. But it extra shut down Bobo Bo. And that was huge because even on the best teams before, you could still get completely fucked by Bobo Bo just happening to, like, to roll good one time. Mm -hmm. So that was the kind of the basic thing. And even in the beginning, it, Bobo Bo, like, there was one unit in the entire game that could stop Bobo Bo's nonsense. But there was still a 5% chance that Bobo Bo could get past every single thing he had to stop Bobo Bo and fuck him over. Which was Ray, the um, Fist of the North Star character. Because, and that's because he had an ability that said, like, I can basically stop two of these status effects, but Bobo Bo can inflict three. So if Bobo Bo just target focused him and got very lucky, he could stop the one thing that was built to stop him early game. Yeah, and then they also had absolutely no idea how to do PvE content. They had no idea how to do it. No, they didn't. Uh, and... The arena eventually became pretty fun, in my opinion. Uh, that, that's yeah. what I played for, was yeah. uh, the, the PvP-esque arena stuff. Um, they tried to make PvE content early on. Um, they made that I event that was hard as fuck. It's still um, so hard that they never returned it. Yeah, it, it was crazy hard. Yeah, And then uh, people bitched, and like, that was way too fucking hard. So after that, they made everything, like, stupid easy. Like, you could just steamroll it with whoever the fuck you wanted. Yep. And so then they, they tried to make a middle ground where they did, like, raid units, but they did the dumb thing where they were only open for, like, one-hour windows at four random times per day, yep. so you could never actually fight them when you wanted to. It, they they just like there was a it lot seems of just like mistakes. or is one of those games where every time they tried to do something they j it was two steps forward two steps back and sometimes yeah, like sometimes it was literally two steps forward three steps back yeah th there was a lot of like surely this time they will do better and then they didn't do better yeah but they always, I always liked the mindset that they had, which was once they committed to like buffing a character or keeping them PvP relevant, then they kind of stayed PvP relevant for the entire time. Like they also gave buffs to units like Vivi, who was literally DOA when she was released, and when they gave her the buff, she was basically like, "No, this is a must own unit if you're gonna be running heart." Like what she does was ridiculous. But at the same time, like by the time, here's another thing that was like the why you should have started getting worried is when we weren't able to get Twitter rewards fast enough. And <laughs> yeah, I remember that they, they used to like give us like, they would give us pity. It's like, you guys almost did it. You guys get the top stuff. And it'd be like, thank you very much. We tried our best. <laughs> we tried um, really hard. There's not enough people playing this. Yeah. To give you the ultimate showing when they beat that Twitter reward shit, um, it would, the comments were full of Japanese players going like, there's a lot of foreigners up in here. What the hell? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like all of a sudden it was like, uh, no, there was actually a very big scene for ore collection, just not in Japan. It was everywhere else, but Japan. <laughs> yeah. There were a lot of people. Uh, I mean, it's all anecdotal shit, Yeah, but who like, uh, I guess lived in Japan, but were on the forum and all of them were like, you know, take this however you want. But people play gotchas like crazy over here. And I mean, you see people on their phone everywhere. And I have never seen someone play this. Yeah. And that's the ultimate sign of just like, well, if no one's playing it, 
then there's nothing we can do. Like, if their only audience is an audience that, first of all, can't fucking understand anything that's in the game, then we're done. And I also feel like there was a certain thing of, like, I feel there is a certain contingency of people that feel that they were wasting their crossover thing. Because you realize when they said, the first thing they mentioned for Ore Collection 2 was, by the way, their story now. And it's like, beforehand, before, story was nothing. There was no story. It was you went through specific manga chapters. And that was the story. And that was, there was like no actual connective tissue. Tissue. It was more like, you like manga, right? Well, here's Shonen Jump or Collection. So that's all the story was, basically. So now I feel like they're going like, well, now we are a focus on story. They're probably going to do more focus on like the mainstream people that everyone wanted I guess from the start or something. Yeah, the the advertisement image was like Goku, Luffy, Naruto, and a two love Rue girl. Who was, was also, it also her? Yeah, she's uh, she was in Or Collection on day one as well, but that's basically the kind of thing they had. But yeah, that's that's kind of why I always think Or Collection failed. It was because. Very simple. They killed a lot of people off early. Like the people who did survive were people like me and Rick who stuck through it, who stuck through the very bad, who stuck through fucking the rise of Sket Dance and then the rise of Die. And then until eventually we eventually hit like a meta point where everything was just kind of equal for a bit. And that's when people started coming in. But by that point, it was too late. It was. Just yeah, like, I, I think there was just too much bad blood that they had already earned. Yeah. And you could tell how bad they fucked up in the beginning. And you could tell they were scrambling because uh, based on what um, the OCHD people said is that when Obachan was released, he had a very specific stage and everything around him that was very weird. He had music and it made it seem as though there wasn't a rail event planned and they never released it because plans changed and they did. Well, not. you could also tell they were scrambling because there was a lot of variety in how they released units uh, early on. Like, they would do, like, fucking whoever the uh, the ultimate muscle guy was. like Kaneko Man. Yeah, Kaneko Man. And all this kind of stuff. But then toward the end, I mean, they were pumping out, like, if people don't buy orbs for Sasuke, followed by Super Saiyan 2 Gohan, followed by Josuke, followed by, the, like, Piccolo, and, like, all this shit. And like, Hie, they were, yeah. and Hie. I mean, they were pumping out as many, like, this has to work, right, guys? Units that they possibly could. Yeah. All in a row. And then we were giving away uh, Yoko Kurama for free for the one yeah, year for they, PvP. Yeah. I mean, in the last, like, few weeks before they confirmed cancellation of the game, um, I think they released more fan favorite units in that period of time than they did, like, all the rest of the game put together. Yep. Yeah, they totally did. So that's kind of that's the rise and fall of Or Collection, and now we have to wait to see Or Collection Two if it <laughs> follows the exact same path. We'll see. I have a bunch of stuff going in that apparently the tickets we're getting is three or higher, so it's actually a chance for us to get a good unit from that ticket. Well, yeah, I figured it would be three or higher, but it's still bullshit that it's only yeah. three or higher. Yeah. Thank you for the question for both of you. And now we go on to another one, which is, this is from Premist, which is if Dokkan ever decided to do another crossover, which game would you like it to be? Uh, like a crossover with like another gacha game? Like I assume like the One Piece Treasure Cruise one. I would like, yeah, okay, let's see. Hmm. I would actually want to see a Fate Grand Order crossover, <laughs> just to see what... <laughs> just to see because that would mean that goku would have to come over to fake grand order and they would have to make story justification as to why the fuck is goku here and there's actually a character of the monkey king so they could totally do a thing of like oh this is monkey king but for some reason there's some war weird warped view of humanity that's making him look like a certain <laughs> saiyan dude and his name is um <laughs> goku so that's what I would want it to be. And then over in uh, uh, Dokkan land, you could have, I don't know, Saber. You could fight her. Just a big-ass Saber. <laughs> Giant King Arthur woman. That's what you would fight. <laughs> Giant Saber. 
giant saber uh her code name is saber her actual name is like arturia or something but i prefer to just call her saber <laughs> let's not yeah that's what everyone knows her as anyway exactly that's what i would like what would you like zen um i think a funny one would be uh dual links <laughs> that would be funny <laughs> So one of the duelists that you can unlock is just Goku. <laughs> and he's just one of the characters you can duel with. Uh, and then in Dokkan, you just have to fight, like, Blue Eyes White Dragons. Could you get, like, a summon banner for Blue Eyes White Dragons? It is just three Blue yeah, Eyes White yeah, Dragons? Be, uh, yeah, the summons would be an SSR Dark Magician, an SSR Blue Eyes White Dragon, and then um, an SSR Dragon. And then they would TUR into Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon, uh, whatever that sorcerer was from the the movie, Sorcerer of Dark Magic or something yeah. like that, and uh, Red Eyes Black Metal Dragon. Will we ever get an LR Magician of Black Chaos? Uh, no, you get LR uh, Black Luster Soldier Envoy at the beginning. Oh, that would be insanely broken. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Once per yes. turn, I can remove one. <laughs> if I'm fighting multiple enemies, I can remove one, but I don't attack. Once per turn, you just kill one of the enemies on the other. <laughs> I would be amazing if they that would be worthy of an LR of the original version of the Black Legend Soldier <laughs> and Boy in the beginning. <laughs> and then, oh, and then we could finally get like Yu-Gi-Oh cards of like Krillin and Duel Links, and <laughs> that would that would be the only one they'd get. It's yeah, Krillin. it would be like a custom Saiyan deck. Oh, that'd be pretty good. And then we'd get spell cards that's like stuff like Vegeta dying or something. They would it'd be the crying <laughs> Vegeta magic card. <laughs> I could see it. Yeah, there you go. I think both of those would be f funny for two different reasons. <laughs> I am really I really like that uh, LR Blackluster Soldier now. Are you kidding me? That would be you know real talk. Uh, Black Lizard Sojo, Envoy at the beginning, at his time, 5 out of 5 big boy, no fucking... Uh, oh yeah, 100%. Are you kidding me? When that dude was released, there that's the reason why... Uh, it's funny that apparently that he was only banned in North America, and it's because we just kept fucking using him all the time. <laughs> in Japan, he, he was, was so good! He was so good, but in Japan, he was just limited. So I always saw it as, like, Japan was like, uh, Black Lizard Sojo is pretty good, but we don't want to, like, abuse him. Let's not be crazy. Let's use other decks. And then over in North America, why are we not using Black Lizard Soldier and Boy in the beginning right now? That sounds a lot like like the difference in how we play video games like between the East and the West. Yeah. I think that's 100% what happened is that that's the reason why he was limited in Japan, but he wasn't over here. Is that if you give the players the option to use Blacklister Soldier Envoy at the beginning, we will force him into every single deck possible because he is that good. <laughs> yep, that sounds exactly like North American gamers that I know. 100%. Blacklister Soldier Envoy at the beginning was the Gogeta of his day. Are you kidding me? He was just so crazy powerful, there was no reason not to use him. I feel like Blacklister Soldier Envoy at the beginning is like why I have a gambling addiction now because I pulled him out of a pack. Oh, And I was like, this is the best feeling I've ever had. A hundred percent. I bought a tin when I was learning how to play Yu-Gi-Oh for real. Cause at that point I was just like, this is my first time in a card game shop. I want to buy some cards. And I want to actually learn how to play Yu-Gi-Oh. Cause I've just been sucking this entire time. Cause I've only been listening to the anime. I opened up my tin and instead of one of the tin um, booster packs, black, black lesser soldier envoy at the beginning. And it was like, and then there was literally a crowd of people around me two seconds later as people went, I cannot believe the fucking guy who just started <laughs> pulled <laughs> Black Lizard Soldier Envoy at the beginning. It was so ridiculous. People were immediately going like, oh, you want to trade? You want to trade? Here, you know, I got some good stuff, man. You're starting out. Let's trade. It was the most like I felt like, okay, people don't crowd around me like this because what I just got was very good. <laughs> That's a much... <laughs> That's how you know when something is legitimately good. It's not when people go, oh, that's, you know, that's pretty good. That's a good start. It's when people go, what the fuck? What is this? <laughs> this is ridiculous. Yeah, you know what you got is good when other people are trying to take it from you. A hundred percent. And that was what that card was. And he was beautiful. And I loved him. And he was banned. <laughs> that was the... <laughs> Almost immediately, yeah. He didn't last very long. 
But mm. then I, I uh, got hooked on Elemental Heroes, and I never went back. Fair. But yeah, damn. God, Dokkan should totally just... You went, do you think Duel Links will ever add... Uh, this is a tangent now. Do you think that uh, Duel Links would ever add Blackluster Soldier and Void the Beginning? Because if they did, I Fuck might... no. I, I might play again if they added him. Just to see what the fuck the meta would turn into. Not a chance in hell will they ever add fucking Envoy in the beginning. Oh, man. I like that there's maybe they now... They won't even put in Cyber Dragon. <laughs> they won't even put in the dragon. <laughs> they're not going to bring out like the full... If they're not going to let a pistol into the game, they're not going to let a full-on rocket launcher into the game. Yeah, but that dude's like a nuke compared to Cyber Dragon. That's fair. Man, get to a Dokkan. <laughs> Do an event with Duel Links. I need it. I need the LR Blackluster Soldier. Yes, and then his animation would literally be like 20 seconds long and it'd be amazing. Even though, <laughs> what does he do besides slash the sword? Yeah, just over the top sword slashes. Yeah. Thank you for the question, Vrimist. And now we'll go on to the next one. This is from Soul Teen. And they ask, Soul Parentheses Teen, I should say, what do you want the most of a unit that you summon for? I feel this kind of goes two ways. There's I summon for a unit because A, either they're good, or B, if I like them. Oh, okay. I didn't understand the question. So he's saying, what do you look for when a unit makes you summon? Yes. That's what I would okay. say. That's how I'm interpreting it. And the that's the basic thing. I'm pulling for them because they're strong. That's the reason why I pulled for Super Saiyan 4 Goku when he was released. Because I could give fuck all for Super Saiyan 4s, but he was strong. So I'm going to pull for him. Yeah. And the other thing is if I like them, which is why I pulled for a Rayleigh. And if the two were to combine into a card that is strong and a card that I like, then it's like all hands on deck because now I can't control what I'm about to do on this gotcha. What do you feel? Yeah, uh, I'm I'm pretty similar. Um, I feel like that's pretty much the stock answer everyone would give to that question. But mm -hmm. if a unit is really good, like they're really good, they will override my dislike for them. Like I obviously don't give a fuck about Super Saiyan 4. I shit on it daily. Yeah. But I still pulled for them, you know? Um, but if a unit... It, it goes both ways. Where like, if I hate a unit but they're really good, I'll still go for them. And then if I really like a unit, but they're not super good, I'll still go for them. Because as long as I like them, it justifies their badness. And as long as they're really good, it justifies my dislike for them. Hmm. Yeah. Like in, uh, in the new, in the Jojo gotcha that I play, it's just like a, it's just like a tile matcher thing. Um, Miss sucked really really bad but I really liked him. so I was excited to get him just because I really like Mista and then uh, Fugo came and F super broken so I'm kind of on top of the world right now mm. the two characters that I really like are really dumb broken together nice but like I, I I like to collect units a lot in this game or I guess any game but Jojo is my prime example because there's a lot of units that aren't very good and there's a lot that are really good like Bruno fuck it sucks he's terrible I got him because I really like part five. Hmm. Yeah, I could definitely see that. Yeah, and I think that's kind of the base, what we look for in a unit. Either they're super strong or we like them. And if they're both, then it's kind of dangerous. Yeah, if they're both, it's uh, it's that meme of Roxas that says, you know, we're broke, right? A hundred percent. Thank you for the question. Next question comes in from Josh Hudson, and they ask... Where would Aureli fit on the big boy scale, or is she up in it above it entirely? Uh, Aureli will get her day. We also had a lot of questions of people asking, where does Anne Hercule fit on the big boy scale? Or where does all the Turles cards, including the best one, SR Turles, fit on the big boy scale? And the answer is, you will have to wait and find out. We take a lot of time, and by we, I mean I tell Zen at the beginning of the episode what we're going to be <laughs> talking about. <laughs> And then we kind of, at that flashpoint at the moment of when I say it, that's when our thoughts come in. We If we if we spend too much time thinking like, oh, what would this unit be? Then the entire system is ruined. 
And when the day comes... You can't rush the system. Exactly. The system has to be fit at the exact beginning 20 minutes of this episode. Or 30, depending on how long we're talking about said units. And then the big boyness is determined. Aureli will one day fit go inside the big boy scale when she does. Who knows? It's the same reason why you never expect it when Aureli watches about the... Start. Hello everyone and welcome to a Rayleigh Watch. I'm here now to tell you what to expect from a Rayleigh. Big news coming in on the front. Uh, after I saw a Twitter from uh, uh, Jinta or Ginta, I cannot say it right, I'll just say it real quick, uh, saying that the current LR Goku is following the basis of the movie posters. That means that it's a very high possibility that LR Kid Goku will have a Rayleigh at the end. This is our only chance for a Rayleigh coming back, <laughs> is as if, if she gets put onto a card. <laughs> then there's a very high chance that she will legitimately come back. And get ready for the depression episode of a really watch when she is not in the LR art. <laughs> She's totally... Never mind. That's been a really watch. Thank you, everyone. It's been another great episode. But yeah, I hope that answers your question. Next question. And I'll say this is the, the last one. And this one comes from oh got got him fifty four, and he asks, "What do you think of the current metas for Legends Zen? What do you think that needs to be improved in the game?" Uh, I can't answer to the meta of Legends because I'm still starting out. I can so this is a hundred percent you, dude. What do you feel about okay. the Legends meta? Uh, Legends meta is pretty good. It's it's pretty varied. Um... The issue in general with Legends when it comes to building a meta is that it's Dragon Ball, and so there's a shit zillion ton of Saiyans, and they're all pretty fucking good. Um, Classic. Super promise. Saiyans is definitely still the best team, uh, to no one's surprise. But it's varied enough. Like I, I don't feel like I'm pigeonholed into not playing what I want. Um, and, and thing they're starting to do that I like, uh, for a while there... They were releasing units that when you got them to five stars, um, they buffed an additional stat. So say like their their Z ability buff would be a certain percentage to their strike attack or like to the team strike attack. And then when you got them to five stars, it added strike defense. And a lot of people were like, wow, that's really shitty because um, I want to, you know, that it makes people pull for five star ones and then they get a big boost for pulling. Well, what they started doing now is they've started just adding a second team to that. So, like, Future Gohan buffs the Future category, and then when you get him to five stars, he also buffs the Hybrid Saiyan category. So, it's less, like, making the rich richer and more kind of spreading them around. Like, the new Trunks does that, too, where he's Future at first, then he also becomes Future slash Hybrid Saiyan. So then it makes these teams that, that were missing a lot of units, like... um androids really suffer from their shit being kind of outdated they were really good at the time and their kits are still pretty good but the cards are old so their stats are kind of power crept and then a lot of their support cards are bad in comparison to new support cards that keep coming out um i mean that's just an issue villains are going to have because unlike the heroes where every single arc goku has some new bullshit that they can make into a character that's going to be really good and is going to keep making saiyans better androids don't have that you know the I guess they can get a uh, tournament of power 17 and 18 at some point, but there's not consistently new androids. Like there's not consistently new boos. You have a finite number of boo that you can get in the game. You have a finite number of freezes that you can make until you start just releasing more versions of Frieza, uh, which legends is at least trying not to do. Um, there's a lot of super Saiyan Goku, but I think that's really the only unit that, where the same character, same form is repeated a lot. Like there's Super Saiyan Vegeta, but then there's Super Vegeta, but there's not multiple Super Saiyan Vegeta. It, it they're more or less the same thing, but you know what I'm saying. It's mm. it's not as one for one like that. Um, but I I think this new buff method is going to be good. Um, it's going to help bring a lot of teams back that I think were dead at first because like Hybrid Saiyans were fucking garbage before this banner came out. They were, in my opinion, they were the worst team in the game that had a full team because they only had, like, 
three different colors on the team, and 90% of the team was fucking support units that sucked. And the best units on the team lost to Broly. <laughs> like, Goten was usually their best unit, and he gets eaten alive by Broly, who is still the best character in the game. It's just a shit show. But then now you've got Trunks coming in. He's blue. Hybrid Saiyans didn't have a blue, really, that they used very much. So Trunks is a big buff for them. Uh, Future Gohan is yellow, which they didn't really need, but he's a much better yellow than Kid Trunks is, so that's still a buff for them. Plus, he's bringing on stats. Hmm. Uh, If if they start shifting that way, off of the double buffs, um, I think that's going to be really healthy because, one, it varies the amount of teams that characters can be good on. Like, Future Gohan has, like, five different teams he fits on just because of that double buff and the categories that he has. So releasing a unit like that is good because a lot of different teams can kind of feast off of the releases and can all buff themselves up in different ways. And then also the units that had the double buffs from that period where they were releasing a bunch of them, um, it's kind of insurance that keeps them good for a while. Because, I mean, when they release these banners like the Master Pack and like the New Year's banners where there's just everybody in there, you know, you're bound to get dupes of those guys over time. Even if you're not like a whale or you don't pull very much or you only pull countered or whatever, you're bound to get these older guys over time. And then keeping the double buffs a bit more restricted to these older units keeps them more viable long term because they add value that these newer guys aren't adding in the same way. Hmm. It's interesting. For sure. Legends uh meta sounds like something that is similar to or collection in certain ways just because of the with the way the category stuff kind of breaks down and i'm kind of a fan of the like the idea of a one unit can fit into multiple teams kind of thing yeah so on that on the one unit fitting into multiple teams uh future gohan is definitely i think the biggest guy for that right now um so the holy trinity as they call it in legends for a while has been super gogeta super saiyan bardock and uh Dragon Ball Super Broly. Mm -hmm. Really good team. Balanced team. Strong units. Gohan drops. And people are starting to take Gogeta out for Gohan. Uh, Gohan is not on his face better than Gogeta in terms of like actual combat. But he's a crazy support unit. When he dies, uh, the entire team gets crazy flat buffs. Um, Which is another thing I like about Legends is that there's a lot of support units that are still good point characters. Like, Gohan is a good point character. He's not a busted point character, but he's a good one. And then when he dies, once Gohan is defeated, the entire team gets 30% added to their strike damage, 35% to their key recovery speed, and their card drawing speed goes up by one level. So that instantly makes the entire rest of the team much more dangerous. So a lot of people have dropped Gogeta, who is just a really good card, for Gohan, who is not quite as good on point, but then once he dies, Bardock and Broly, who are these ridiculously strong characters, get even stronger, and it's a permanent buff unless they get like dispelled because mm-hmm. characters can break buffs in this game and get rid of them. But there's no time limit on the buff. So he's a permanent increase to those characters. That is. Discerning. Then you've also got Hybrid Saiyans. So he works with Hybrid Saiyans. The, the, the Holy Trinity team would be Super Saiyans. He works with Hybrid Saiyans, and he works with uh, the Sun family. So... Uh, Goku's, Goten's, and Gohan's. There's not a ton of Sun Family support right now, but Kaioken Goku uh, gives it. And so Kaioken Goku is really, really good. He is, a lot of people will argue top two. Um, I think that's pretty reasonable. I don't think he's better than Broly, but he's certainly in contention for number two. Um, So just by virtue of how good Kaioken is, that's another team right off the top of the bat that Gohan works on. And then he also works on the future team. So that's four different teams that Gohan is like front and center on. Hmm. That's real cool. So that's just- also you'll like this. One of the meta teams, Woman Warriors. That does already sound pretty awesome. <laughs> I'm they're they're good. They're good. Mai is crazy good. I was able to get Mai, so I'm already kind of looking. Everyone was dumping on her when they came when she came out. I don't know if you pay attention on Twitter when Legends data comes out. I don't. I only listen to you guys. Everybody was shitting on her. Oh my god, I can't believe Mai is in the banner. She's going to be the one that's guaranteed, because you know how every uh, Ultra Space Time has the one that you can buy 
you get like 2,000 gems plus the unit or whatever. Yeah. Uh, everyone was like, oh my god, she's going to be the one you can buy. God, that sucks. They're going to screw us over. She's crazy good. Her main ability restores ally health by 20% and gives 15% to all of their damage for 20 seconds, uh, no matter what. No yeah. matter what category they're on, what team she's on. She's fucking good. And then the trunks ended up being the unit you could buy. Trunks ended up being the unit you can buy and also the worst one in the band of the three. Um, but Mai is really good. Um, Android 18, who's been kind of butt for a long time and everyone's been kind of like down on her. Um, <laughs> she's finally good <laughs> because girls are good now. Uh, her, she had the female warrior buff for a long time, which is like, well, who the shit even... There isn't that. So she didn't have any value. Now she's really good. The blue 18 that everybody missed because she was in a really shitty banner and that was it. She's really good. Fasha just came out. You got B-Pan. Uh, they're not like the best team in the game, but they're really good. Good enough if you can... Uh get skilled enough to use them you can definitely hang yeah yeah there's a lot of teams in this game that like no they're not broly but they're good and they can win and they can get you to 50 yeah yeah i could see that and that's really cool so what would you um just to answer the second half of the the question what would you improve into legends meta do you feel uh, I would definitely stick with the way that they're handling buffs now with Gohan and Trunks. Um, diversify the buffs. So don't double down on it because when you double down on them, like um, when you start adding additional stats to one buff, you're just kind of making the rich richer. A Saiyan doesn't need... Like, let's say a new Goku comes out and he gives 25%. Great. When you five star him, he gives twenty five percent also to blast attack. Like he doesn't need that for Saiyans. Saiyans don't need his help. Mm -hmm. But if you make him come out with a Saiyan skill, and then when you get him to five star, he also includes the sun. Well, that's his. Help. You're making that unit player because he has a lot of options, and you're stopping the better teams from becoming even better in comparison to everybody. So I think that's a, a much better way to go in the future. I, I fix anything. I think they just kind of need to keep on the course that they're on, and uh, they also need to buff units a little bit more often, mm -hmm. mostly because that, that Masters Pack one, um, it's gone now, so you can't pull it anymore. But most of the units in it are bad. They're they're bad now. Like that red trunks. I mean, he's a nightmare. He yeah, his him. kit is like good on paper, but he's trash. Super Saiyan Vegeta, trash. And, like, they, they could really be good with some tweaks. I think that that Red Trunks, if they buffed him, he would be a huge boost to both hybrids and to uh, the future team. But the way he is right now, like, they really want a unit like him, and you can't... He's just too bad. Okay. Sounds pretty good. That seems like a good summation of Legends and how you feel about him. Yeah. Rant there, but we got through it. Yes. Um, thank you for the question, and thanks, thank you everyone for joining us for another episode of To Be Released. Um, I hope you enjoy it. I, yeah, I forget how the fuck we're supposed to end To Be Released. <laughs> <laughs> I think you just usually just say bye. Oh, I say, you know, I remember the immortal words. Say goodbye, Zenra. Bye, everybody.